It's June 13th, 2024. This is Rook. Hi there, welcome to episode 326 of Rook. I'm Gian Gomeshi. Hello to you from Toronto. Hello to you from Canada. Salam dustan aziz. Turut bashama. Hope you're doing well wherever you are tuning in from around the world. We are coming to you from our new downtown Toronto East location, although not the exact location because we're in a temporary, we're in an interim studio that's near the big studio that we're moving into. <laughs> You really don't need to know all of that no. out there, but I like explaining it. Hi, Smart Pega. Hello. And what's funny is um, we've created, uh, because we wanted to shoot some video in here when we do the interviews, we've created, <laughs> we've <laughs> tried makeshift. to create a makeshift Rook studio with our red lights in mm-hmm. it, but the walls here are white. And something about the lighting and the red lights and the and the signs has created an orange glow. We're basically <laughs> in an orange room. We are. We look like Orange Crush, Orange Phantom. <laughs> if people know what that is, the soda. Um, but nice here to be here. Here we are. Yes. Solar Golami, mm-hmm. Pega. Solar Golami. You know what he is? Boxer extraordinaire. He's a legitimate champion. He's number. He is not. You know how those Persian real estate agents all say they're number one? Oh, yeah. Like there's like 20,000 of them in Toronto. Top and they're 1%. like, I am number one in Estoville. And you're like, but there's at least a thousand <laughs> but real estate agents who like say they're number one. who say that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am number one in Escarborough. Yeah, he is not one of, uh, I'm number one, and I have to think of a non-Toronto reference. I am number one in uh, San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> San Francisco. Uh <laughs> They all have a heavy, yeah, dodgy accent. Reason. Yeah. Um, so all of uh, so this guy is actually he's not that. Yeah. He is a real champ. He was a champion boxer in Iran mm-hmm. at a very young age. Became like it was well. in his early twenties. It became the captain of Team Mali, mm-hmm. the Iranian national boxing team. Now he's here in Canada and he's a Canadian champion. Wow. The cruiser welt. Oh. Cruiser belt. Cruiser welt. <laughs> cruiser weight. Cruiser. Wait, what belt? is it, Super P? It's uh, oh, you wouldn't know. Cruiser, <laughs> <laughs> it's cruiser, cruiser weight, cruiser okay. weight, cruiser weight belt. Uh, but he's also going for all kinds of other belts. I'm, you know, he is a he's a very very impressive guy. Mm-hmm. He was in the crosshairs of the regime. He was yes. speaking out against uh, the Islamic Republic, which is part of the reason why he kind of had to exile himself mm-hmm. from from Iran, from the Islamic Republic, and live here in Canada. Um, he's clearly a great talent, and he's also a very soft-spoken guy. Mm, like if you've ever met Salar, he's a he's a big. Uh, he was a at soft, my birthday last yeah, week. You, met, did I, did well, you talk to him? We didn't get to talk, but I did. I did see him. You didn't think to say hello. <laughs> it was. It was so busy in there. I couldn't right. say hello to every right. single person. He was he's a, he was the large guy, the yes. big guy with a hat. I recognized him yeah. for sure. He, but a soft-spoken if boxer. If you had said hello, you would have known he was that a... That he was soft-spoken. Yeah, instead of ignoring the poor guy <laughs> at my birthday. Are you kidding? <laughs> Gian's making up all sorts of stories. I did not ignore anyone. It was a very busy uh, birthday, right, actually. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, so Solar is joining us for... He's going to come in here for a feature interview. Yes. And I have to say, his story is such a compelling one. It's really like a movie. Like he worked his way out of a small town. Mm -hmm. He grew up with limited means. His father encouraged him, you know, if you become a great boxer, you can get out of here and you can make a name for yourself, et cetera. And it's exactly what he's doing. Um, And he's such a... uh, As I say, he's very passionate about Iran. He's Mm -hmm. a soft-spoken guy, but he's got a big heart. Salar Golami, we'll get to all of that in our interview. Looking forward to that. Um, It was my birthday this past week. You know whose birthday it is today? Whose birthday? Or it's whose birthday? And it was your sister's birthday. It was my sister's birthday yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. So the Gemini's. The Gemini's. Shout out to all the Gemini's out there. So many Gemini's around me. The Chordadia. Yeah. Is that what we are? I think so. Well, she is, and you are. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's like a weird cutoff because Chordad and June don't necessarily align entirely. So. But I'm we're Chordad. Yes. So today would have been my dad's birthday. Oh, wow. Your yeah. birthdays are so close. Absolutely. Me, my sister, and my dad are all June babies. Wow. Uh, and my dad, of course, died uh, 
about 10 years ago mm-hmm. now, uh, almost 10 years ago. But today would have been his birthday. And so I was reflecting on him and thinking about how, I mean, I, I, I've, I told the story when he died, you know, but I don't know if I ever told it on Rook of, of the reasons why, you know, I have this tattoo on my mm-hmm. arm that says Fat Hank. Yes. And people think they see it, it's written in Persian. Iranians see it and think that I put, Fat Hank means culture, mm-hmm. that I just put culture on my arm. To, right. And that's, oh, well, isn't that nice? He put, he has a tattoo <laughs> that says culture. In but Farsi. It, it's actually, hi, Super P, by the way. Hello. Yeah, but it's actually uh, it's actually my father's. Not only my father's name was Fat Hang, but also my father's. Uh, this is my father's signature. Whoa. Like I got him to sign, and you know, like at, it was like fifteen years ago or mm-hmm. something. And I was like, Dad, come on, will you sign so I can? Uh, I was younger, so my voice was higher. Dad, <laughs> could you? And <laughs> and he was like, Why? This is stupid. Why are you doing this? this? But I know he secretly liked it. You know, I think. So I got and I took his signature and I scanned mm-hmm. it and took it to a tattoo artist. And um, but the reason I have his name tattooed on my arm, not just because he was my beloved uh, dad, but because despite the fact that he wasn't uh, a rock star, he wasn't um, you know a, a billionaire, he wasn't uh, a public person, a famous mm-hmm. politician or something, he was my hero. Uh, and still is to this day. And the reason is because he was of that wave of immigrants who really sacrificed everything for mm-hmm. their family in a way that I don't think anybody, through all the trauma and difficulty that we know Iranians, for example, right now go through to to, to leave Iran, mm-hmm. um, Super P would have done that three years ago. You know, no, it, it will never be the way it was when my parents did it. Right. And my dad, whose father had died at the age of fifteen, my dad was um, grew up in Khuzestan, was born in Abadan, Ahvaz, Desful. That was the the hang. Ends up going to before before that, before he goes to Tehran, uh, his father dies. Mm-hmm. He's the oldest of eight kids, becomes the de facto father, really doesn't have any time for a social life or anything throughout all his 20s into his early 30s because he's running the family business mm-hmm. and ac- acting as the father, taking care of my grandmother, etc. cetera. Um, and then finally, he by his mid thirties, as the kids have grown up, he decides, "Let I'm going to go to the to the new world and with my um, new wife, my mom, and and they go to England." This is before the 1979 mm-hmm. revolution, of course. Uh, so they're not exiled in that way right. that a lot of people are. They're the first wave of immigrants, you might say. Or, um, and so they go to England. And at, at that time, there's no, um, you know, you're not hopping onto TikTok to see how your <laughs> your friends back in Abadon are, right? right? I mean, there's nothing. There's no internet. Even to make phone calls was so pricey and so much that they would write letters back to the family. Mm-hmm. And so my dad, my f- parents were kind of pioneers years in that way and he ends up saying look at you know even though the family's kind of prominent back in iran you guys keep everything he gives you know to his his brothers and sisters and everything and says i'm i'll start a new life Mm -hmm. here in the west uh and when the revolution comes the the option of going back to iran slowly goes fades away and they come that we're here in canada and we grew up here in canada but but my dad um really was that person who sacrificed everything for Mm -hmm. the family to come to what he hoped would be a a better life for his family, especially after the Islamic Revolution. And then he evolved as a person, and I always talk about how people can can grow, never give up on somebody's ability to grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know if you saw this with your grandfather or with some Absolutely, of the people around yeah. you, but but uh, even when people are cold stubborn as they get into older age, oh, yeah. they have the ability to grow, never give up on someone. Mm-hmm. And my dad, who, when we were young, was kind of a conservative hard ass, you know, in terms of his parenting style. He didn't know, you know, what are they, what does he know about? So he was very tough on my sister, for example, like he wanted to be the strict Persian father, Mm -hmm. you know, and he had some ideas about some social issues and, you know, uh, all of that, that that he really evolved out of so Mm -hmm. that by the last 10 years of his life, in his senior years, he was, you know, pro-gay and, you know, sort of Roshan Fekhr on all these Mm -hmm. issues that he would have been very kind of um, 
uh, old school about, right. you know, before. And, and, and so if you had judged him by the prism of, of 2024, you know, 50, 40 years ago, you would have gone, this guy's a, you know, a, a sort of right wing backwards or whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know what you'd call him, you know, somebody who's, uh, you know, out of touch or uh, out of date. But he grew and it was so beautiful the way he grew into this sage older man. Mm-hmm. Uh, and through living a very hard life, back in Iran trying to keep the family business going. The second oldest brother dies in front of my dad's eyes. You know, wow. uh, there's family members who die in the Iran-Iraq war. All kinds of things happen mm-hmm. that it, it's a tough life. Um, so on the occasion of what would have been my dad's birthday, I, I uh, wanted to say a little shout out to my dad and the memory of those that first wave of immigrants mm-hmm. who came to the West from Iran or from anywhere in that region and didn't really have the means to do it in a way that as difficult as it is today, mm-hmm. uh, it's nothing like it oh, was. Definitely it's not. nothing like it was, for right? For sure. And I think you said it beautifully, that evolution for someone like that, um, of that age in that time is just something that, you know, even now when I think about it, it blows my mind because you're right. I, I had something similar with my grandfather, same thing. And, you know, we saw him change so much over the years and his views on things like you mentioned. So, Happy birthday to your dad. My dad was a lot older than me. My dad was 40 years older than me. So I, I was, when when he was, when I was young, you know, my mm-hmm. dad would say something like, uh, and I'd be like, oh my God, dad, <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. Like, you know, I, I'd be sort of intolerant yeah. of him. Like, oh, he's so, you know, I would be playing hockey when I was like 10 and uh, the other fathers were like young Canadian fathers right. on the ice with there. And my dad was like an immigrant in the stands and <laughs> didn't quite know what was going on on the ice. And I'd be like, Oh my God. My, and then of course I grew to, to be so enamored of, mm-hmm. of his strength, you know, in terms of what he brought and And he was such a, a very, um, he, he, my dad never made a decision in his life that wasn't about what he thought was the right thing to do for his family. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just very, uh, uh, really, uh, he really is my hero in that sense. So, um, that's something else I want to tell you before okay. Salar Kolami comes in here. Uh, this, <laughs> this is a little, uh, uh lighter perhaps, but, <laughs> but it's an, 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 and I'll include Super P in this one. Um, this week I got, I got caught up in something I'm going to call the Taruf loop. Oh. The Taruf loop. I feel like I already know what that is and have been there, but okay, let's oh, hear it. Let me tell you. You know, there's different layers and commitments to Taro, Taro. these days. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, I say that because I came from what would be, I think, called a very Tarofi family. Iranians listening know what that is. Mm-hmm. Non-Iranians, it's Tarofi. Non-Iranians, we can't explain it Well, there's no, there's no word for <laughs> it, really but you, what, we, what you'd say is that some bizarre form of societal over politeness yes. that you kind of practice in its most beautiful form it's coming from a, a lovely place mm-hmm. in its most cynical form it's just nonsense bullshit that you know <laughs> people are engaging in no please don't pay for your cab ride and but then actually you're, but actually they mean pay for your fucking cab ride um so I grew up in a pretty Tarofi family, mm-hmm. both sides of my family, definitely my mother's side and also my, my dad's side. And so so for me, it was a very clear, you know, uh, if, 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 you're, if you're on equal Tarof grounds, mm-hmm. you understand each other. Right. You say, Gian, I come to your place. You say, Gian, would you like some tea? I say, oh, no, I couldn't. I and don't want to put say, you please. out. Then you say, please, you must have some. And then I say, no, 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 it's too much trouble. And then you say, no, you must. And then we literally get into a physical <laughs> altercation because you're trying to bring me tea. And I'm like, no, no, you mustn't go to the trouble. If, so, But we understand each and other. And you eventually have the tea. Well, I have the tea. And then I have to invite you for tea because you, you give me tea. <laughs> oh, it's exhausting. Uh, Super P, this is of a young. Are you, is your mic on? Yes. Uh, all right. Yeah, I see you laughing there, right in here. Okay. So, so the, that's even taught off. Yes. Even taught off. Now, on the other hand, I noticed that first of all, some of these kids these days, <laughs> and not pointing to anyone. I'm not, so. <laughs> Yeah. I, he's looking at me. He's looking right at you. <laughs> no, because we've had very Tarofi members of our team. You know, Shia was very Tarofi. Mm-hmm. People are Reza is kind of a Tarofi guy. This Parisa, I don't, I don't necessarily think of her as Tarofi, but okay. that's okay. The, the people are different, you know. Yeah. But what I've noticed as well is some of the people, for example, on the Rook team. 
they don't necessarily, know, you know, because not everybody is Torah fee, mm-hmm. is Torah fee these days, you know, uh, they also don't know to expect that from me. Right. So they'll say, uh, hey, we're going to grab some lunch. Would you like someone? I say, no, I really couldn't. And they go, okay, fuck you. We're going <laughs> to go get lunch. Right. I'm like, what? What? What happened? So uh, note to the book team, Jean is Torah fee. If you're going to go for lunch, ask him more than once. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, this is, a, it's this humiliating. Is, yeah. We're, we're uh, airing our dirty laundry here on this episode. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, so this week, uh, I so so I, I don't know anymore. Right. I don't know. I don't know what to do anymore. I don't know. Do I? How be, uh, much tarot? Am I tarot fee or am I not tarot fee? Like I really don't know. Like I was. Uh, it's hard. Like the Chic Peaks, you right. know those guys. They've <laughs> yes, been our I sponsor. Know those guys. <laughs> they're 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 wonderful. They're 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 uh, caterers, but they yes. they've been our sponsor. And I went up to visit them this uh, this weekend, and they've got a restaurant too. Mm-hmm. So at the end, the guy goes, "No, no, you mustn't pay." Now we've just done a sponsorship thing, so we've done business together. It makes sense. Oh, I'm not going to pay for. Why would I pay for the? But on the other hand. And I'm like, I think I got to pay. <laughs> I didn't know. Where does the taught off? Is he taught off thing? Like, because there's the taught off, which is like, nah, please, you mustn't pay. And then you right. leave and they're like, I can't believe the guy he didn't, didn't pay. pay. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so uh, this week, it was my birthday. Yes. You know? So some lovely people gave me some gifts for my birthday, right? Mm-hmm. So this one couple who really, they go overboard. They they they, they shouldn't have. I, I really mean that. It's too, And this is also taught off. To give somebody like a, you know, I don't even, we're not that close. They give me these, they always give me these amazing presents, right? right. So they give me this, um, this gift. It's a box from a very fancy store that we don't need to promote. Okay. That, and it's like a cologne and a bunch of like, what do you call it? Toiletries and right. sort of stuff, you know? And I, I, I'm like, I think this is a really fancy store, you know? And so, so I, and, and I look it up. <laughs> <laughs> to see just how fancy. I, I googled the present. Right. Right. I'm like, I, I think this is like, they give me this box with all this stuff in it. I think, I think these are very valuable. I right. don't know the store that well. It's a, I know it's a fancy store. So and then I Google it and it's like, this is like expensive stuff. Really, mm-hmm. really fancy, you know? So then I'm thinking, oh, geez. And now, when it comes to cologne, because mm-hmm. uh, uh, part of the, 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 the main, the highlight of the box was cologne. Okay. Right. When it, when it comes to like that, I am not only am I covered, you know, I got my I got my go to yes, colognes. I think right. we've talked a bit about we it on have, the show. Yeah. Have. But also it's a personal thing, you yeah. know, you know, what? and there's only so much cologne that you can have. I mean, you know, I, I got I've gotten stocked up on my <laughs> Amu Zagar. What was it called? What's the thing that I wear? The Amu. Uh, I don't the, know. The, yes, the, you do. Oh, the, the one from Nisha. Yeah, from Oman. Oman. Yeah. Um, Amouage. 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 Yes. I got my Amouage. Yes. I got my Dior. I got my old Hermes stuff. You know, I got I got enough stuff. You've got your yeah, collection. I got my collection, and these are the things that I you know. So so I I kind of go. Well, this is really nice, but right. so so I go. You know, and then I see that there's a bunch of other stuff in this store. I hope they're not listening. <laughs> I'm not going to say their names, but I hope that. So then I see there's other stuff in the store. They just give me a gift that's worth a lot. I'm not going to use this cologne. So you want to exchange it? Well, I love Why a not? rational human, right. right? So I go, oh, you know, I've I got wish, options. I wish I could take this and exchange it, mm-hmm. right? So, anyways, I, I text them and go, "Listen, thank you so much for." Uh, I got texted you. You bought me a bottle yes. of champagne. That was yes. really nice. I texted them and said. Uh, Hey, hey, thank you so much. You went overboard. That was a really wonderful gift. You know, I appreciate mm-hmm. it. So the guy texts back and he goes, oh, <laughs> like, or they say, of course, you know, you wonderful. By the way, in the box, there's a gift certificate. If you wanted something else, you know, you can go take oh, it. Okay. So now the guy's giving me blessing, oh, yes. right? I can exchange it, right? Yes. I mean, hasn't he? Yes. Okay. I would he put so. it in the text, yeah. right? So I go through the box. I don't see the gift certificate. Uh oh. I don't see it anywhere. There's no gift certificate. There's no. I mean, I think what happened is it fell out somewhere. Like right. it was in with their card or something like that. Uh, and then I'm talking to Super P. I'm like, I got this thing, uh, this gift, and what do I do? And, I, you know, and 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 I can't find the gift certificate. I, she comes and checks the box as well. You know, and there's no gift certificate, right? No. Turn your mic on. It's on. it's on. All right. You're just not speaking with your mouth closed. <laughs> so, so now, now I don't have the gift. I, I, I want to take You've the gift. You've got the blessing, back. but not the gift. I got the, the blessing, but not the gift certificate. 
So then I text the guy. <laughs> this is the part that this this is the contravention. Okay. This is the tower flip. So I text the guy and go, uh, "That's it's so wonderful that you should say that because I was thinking. Oh. Yeah, I was thinking maybe I'll see what else there is, right. but to be honest, I can't find the gift certificate. So then he texts back and goes, "No, I just spoke to you know his his part his ham sad. Mm -hmm. No, we we're sure we put the gift certificate in there. Right. You can't see the gift certificate. It's there. Please, do you want to you know." And I can tell now they're a little agitated right. because uh, where's the gift certificate? And you know he he doesn't like the gift. And yeah. you know, <laughs> so so I think if I were to ask my mother, she would have said, "Don't text them. Don't say you don't want the." I you know, would like, say the same. Well, I, the guy said, <laughs> "Okay." So so then so the, here's that's the, the that's here's the, the politeness of the toro. Oh, that's the politeness. It's part. so irrational. I'm not going to do. What am I going to do with this gift? No, but no. okay. Here's okay. the thing. Like, in, if I were in that situation, yeah. I would have said, "Oh, thank you so much." Even though the person gave you the blessing, and even if I was going to do it, I wouldn't call it out. <laughs> I wouldn't be like, <laughs> "By if, the way." <laughs> But you what know? if you can't find the gift certificate? Just go to the store and deal with oh, it there. Oh, I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking. <laughs> so then, so no, it, it's not over yet. Oh my God. So okay. then I, now I feel really bad because right. I can tell. And they're, they, it was a little, they're really sweet. She on June, blah, 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 but I could tell it was a little bit terse. Like it was like, no, the gift certificate was in Is there. there yeah. You know, like basically F you, like you know, yeah. with your gift certificate. Yeah. <laughs> So I've turned this like beautiful birthday with the wonderful gift there into it's already into a disaster. A okay. So then I say, um, I, I I write this like long oh, paragraph no. going, no no no, I love the gift. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna now keep the gift. To justify it. I'm gonna keep the gift. You don't understand. It's so amazing. I was I wasn't even really serious about wanting to. I just thought uh, because you said that. <laughs> I'd, that I, I would love to keep oh the gift. Oh, my God. Please, don't even. I mean, thank you. So, again, you went overboard. This is the best gift. Thank you so much. <sighs> so then he writes back, no, we'll find the gift certificate. Get you another one oh, if we have wow. to. wow. Right, because now he's. Now, yeah. So now we're in a total floop. Oh, my God. Where I'm like. Did you respond again? Ladies and gentlemen, the total floop. <laughs> I am now in the position <laughs> In the, the in the in the prevaricating position, I'm lying of saying no, no, no. This is the best yeah. gift, please. And then he, who clearly doesn't, you know, it's a busy guy. Of course, they don't want to. They have to now go running Track around town. Down, yeah. He said she'll go back to the store to get another gift certificate for you. Oh my! I mean, it's a disaster. <laughs> This is this is our culture. See, this is the thing. You made a mistake. You got caught in the Tarot game and you made a mistake. At <laughs> what point did the Tarot loop start? No, I think I, th I think it's the you have to be really careful of the politeness matter. And I think the polite thing would have been when he said, you know, here's the gift certificate or whatever you just ended it with thank you no be, okay hang on a second if Torof didn't exist yes that's a very practical thing to say if Torof didn't Listen, exist yeah. we gave you a gift we don't really know what you like or what you know right. it's, we, it's kind of fancy you know this isn't like a $35 this mm -hmm. is something you know so by the way there's a gift certificate there go, go use it if you need to right yeah, but even if there wasn't Torof you would have just said thanks so much I didn't see the gift certificate um, you know, <laughs> instead of, instead of instead there's of, no gift certificate. Instead of there's no gift certificate, and this is the greatest gift I've ever gotten. I'm not going to return it. <laughs> what What do you think, Super B? You should have said just thank you, and oh, that's see? It. Oh. Yeah. she's even one step further. I yeah. Know. Now that I just, now I tell the story, you it can't. sounds horrible. Why did I? These poor people. I've terrorized them with that. Where's the gift certificate? <laughs> I want to go and get something else. You've sent them on a wild goose oh. chase to go get another copy. They, I mean, they've spent all this money on a gift and now, and now you no hate one's it. happy. They hate me now. <laughs> they won't buy you anything for the next year. Let's see what they get next you next year. Oh, my yeah. God. They should just get me the gift. Just give me a gift certificate. Yeah, you're getting you know a what? gift card. I have to be honest. The people who get, like, I, I used to think. Do you like think, that? Gift cards and stuff? I used to think it was a highly, I would even judge people for their lack of originality yeah. and creativity. I kind of Really? Do. You're giving me a gift card from the Bay? I love it. Thank you very much. I'll go pick my own thing. It depends on who's giving me the gift. Yeah, like if true. you're if you're closer than a certain level, like if we're friends, like fairly good friends, I expect you to go out of your way to find something meaningful or, you know. But if we don't know each other that well and it's just kind of like a, you know, here's a bottle or a gift certificate or a gift card or whatever, then it's fine. I'm caught in the Toro loop. <laughs> I don't know what the next move is. 
I they're gonna. I, I mean, honestly don't think there is a next. Well, move no, they're week. going to get another gift certificate. Oh boy. And I, I, I don't want. Like, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with the wonderful, <laughs> <laughs> the first world problem gift. That, oh like, I gosh. mean, it's wonderful. Like, I, I feel so bad. And I, I, you know, I didn't even think it through. I was kind of whimsical about it, right? Like right. I was like, oh, well, maybe you know, they also have these fancy you jackets your and Persian stuff. For a minute. That I'm supposed to just accept that the just yeah. The yeah. Game. I didn't even know that it's okay, like for you guys, like for Canadians, to get a like receive a Give gift and then turn it back. It's just it's so crazy. Actually, me. we had somebody on you, the like, show. You, when you receive a gift, you don't turn it back. You don't say anything. I'm trying to remember who it was you we had on no the show, what? but you keep it no matter what. We had somebody who came on the show who was talking about when they first moved from Iran. And she's, I know. Back in the, it was like in the 80s or 90s, and then they, they moved Hak- here. Roya Hakakian. Roya Hakakian. And she said that her friend took her to the, to give something back at the store, and she'd never, she was like, what what's happening? <laughs> what do you mean you're giving something back? How is that possible? Like, it was like a whole cultural shock, shock for her. Yeah. yeah. Even when I moved here, I was like, <laughs> honestly, can now I return And that's totally things? the culture here is yeah. return everything, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like second guessing myself now, and I'm like, have I ever put a gift certificate with a gift that I've gotten for someone? Like, should I be doing that more often? I think you should. Okay. Really? I even do that with my family at Christmas no, time. No, but like, right? yeah, like family. You, you don't know if, if the close. sweater is going to go over that well. Uh, it never does with my mother. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> God, God forbid I don't put the gift certificate in there cause, so she can go pick something else. Pick whatever she wants. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh. But uh, yeah, I should have just said nothing. Yeah. And just gone you back. You say and, thank you. That's, that's it. The oh, safe answer. The taro floop. We're caught in the tarot loop forever. I, know, I don't I see how we're ever going to get out of the tarot loop. No, because they're going to. This is going to go on forever. They're going to. I'm going to see them at a party. You know, a year from now, and they're going to go. We still owe you that gift certificate. I'm oh going to go. No, God. I love the. I'm wearing the gift. It's great. <laughs> you know, and I'm going to have to like wear that cologne all the time to prove that I love the gift. Anytime you see them, you have. To I'm going to have to carry the box around. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, enough shenanigans. We do. We we don't even have time for much of a roundup. No. Do you want to do a quick roundup? Um, yeah, I just you know what. Actually, before we do the roundup, I wanted to do a quick shout out. Actually, um, it, it's relevant to the roundup. Uh, a lot of people might know that recently there was another journalist um, in Sweden this time who was moved to a secure location and is now being um, taken under the protective custody of the of the Swedish police because of um, death threats that, right, that right. they've received. So this is Mehran Abbasian, a journalist with the, with Iran International national tv and um you know this is nothing new we've talked about this before and the problems that this presents but what i really wanted to say is you know i wanted to shout out um swedish parliament members two of whom we know and are friends of rook Adi Reza Hundi and Aza de Rojan, who both have actually addressed the swedish minister of culture and the minister of foreign affairs in written pleas asking for enhanced protection for journalists nice. and i thought you know sweden's not really a country that you hear this happening a lot in. we've heard it in the united states a lot We've heard it in other places, but for them to take such quick response to this, I thought was just something that, you know, I really wanted to shout yeah, out for yeah, sure. Yeah. Nicely um, done. And way to go, Azadeh Rojan and, yeah, and Ali Reza. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but round up, there is one thing I wanted to okay. bring up, actually. Um, recently, we've seen reports of upwards of 200 cases being brought against Iranians who, get ready for this, celebrated Raisi's death. So what's happened is there's a widespread campaign. In Iran. In Iran, yes. Mm. Well, actually, not just in Iran. In Iran and outside of Iran. Mm. Because what's happening is the quote-unquote cyber army is actually targeting any individual who has posted anything, um, which is basically celebrating Raisi's death. And of course, we knew that this was going to be um, quite widespread. We saw a lot of very interesting, very humorous posts, a lot of celebrations when this took place. And so now what's happened is that the cyber army and and other divisions of the IRGC, I would assume, are targeting individuals and actually taking legal action. Uh, These legal actions are cited for spreading falsehood, offensive content, and destabilizing society's psychological stability. So again, you know, we keep talking about um, in in light of the elections happening, things are going to be more lax, but we still see the atrocities being committed at the hands of the IRGC. Yeah. All right. And the, the, by the way, the election happening, but um, who cares? 
or well, or they've narrowed it down to six candidates. They've, yeah, they've narrowed it down to six candidates. But I mean, with every step that the they're Iranian taking, presidential election, yes. I should clarify. Yeah, with every step that they're taking, I think it just solidifies what we've talked about so many times, which is the fact that this is just such a sham. The whole thing is just a sham. <laughs> Thank you, Pega. Thank uh, we'll get you. ready for Salar Olami coming in the studio in just a moment. Um, always put a gift certificate in with your gifts. Will do. That's Moving the forward. lesson. <laughs> the lesson we've, we've learned from today. And happy birthday, Saba, uh, Pega's sister. All right. Salar Olami in just a moment. We are coming to you on rookmedia.com. It is there that you can link to all of our platforms. We're on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Instagram, and CastBox. If you'd like to see some visuals on Rook, switch over to YouTube right now. And if you like your Rook descriptions and bulletins in both English and in Persian and Farsi, check us out on Telegram. All of that is at Rook Media. Again, our website for all things Rook related, including videos, funnies, episodes of the Contemporary History of Iran series, all of that is at rookmedia.com, where you can also press the button to support us and become a Patreon member. If you like what we do on Rook and you want to help us out, we really appreciate it. There are monthly subscriptions available to become a Rook member for uh, very little, a pittance each month Each month at, at uh, rookmedia.com. On the main page there, press the support us button. As ever, we appreciate you. walked into the studio. My feature guest today is a professional boxer born in Kermanshah, Iran, with a prominent amateur background. He served as the captain of the Iranian national boxing team from 2016 to 2018. Salar Qolami, also known as Saliwan, began boxing at the age of four under the guidance of his father, a professional boxing coach in Iran. Despite dabbling in other sports like basketball and swimming, the strong family tradition in boxing ultimately drew him to the sport. Through his amateur career, Salar fought in over 300 matches for both the youth and, and adult Iran national teams. And of course, he achieved that distinction of becoming the team captain at just 23 years old. In 2019, he moved to Canada to pursue a professional career in Toronto. He is Canada's cruiserweight champion and the holder of a Canadian championship belt. Salar is also the owner of Saliwan, a boxing club in the north of the greater Toronto area. He's got a big fight event in Toronto coming up this weekend, June 16th. But first, right now, Salar Golami joins me in the Rook studio. Hello, sir. Hi, thank you for inviting me. And actually, June 16, I don't have a fight. It's my first uh, show, first, uh, first event. I want to use my guys, my boxers, for the Olympic style boxing uh, and amateur, amateur style. But I have a fight in uh, middle of September. And maybe that be my last fight in the Canada. I want to defend my belt for the last time. And then I want to sign a contract with the U.S. And maybe I should go there for the North American belt. Or Wow. You've yeah. said, I don't even need to do the interview. You've said it all. You, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we've got all the information sorry, we need. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but no, I, I, I think I knew it wasn't a fight. I called it a fight event. Yes. Because it's a, this event on June 16th. We'll get to that. Okay. And now I'm very curious to talk more about your last fight in, in Canada. And the, yeah. um, First of all, thank you for being here. We've wanted thank to have you, you for thank a you while. For you even wore your um, red hat. Yeah, I mean, you've got an awesome, I mean, for people who are not watching this and just listening, you've got a red t-shirt, a red hat. You look like, uh, I mean, I guess it's uh, Canada. It goes with the Rook studio. I, <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank I recently you. met you for the one of the first times. I think maybe I went met you once before that. Yeah. You seem, you're very soft-spoken. You're very modest in person. Uh, what do you think people expect when they meet a, a champion boxer and and what do they get wrong in terms of what they expect I in person the, actually you know what the boxers the professional boxers they are all of them this they're, they're so calm and sometimes if you watch the boxer they don't looking for the trouble or talking shit or sometimes in the pro boxing they want to get the attention for the 
for the media. Right. But the lifestyle, because I grew up in the national team, because my father is a coach, my uh, uh, uncle, my cousin, my family, it's all of them is that uh, they are boxers. They are professional boxers. And when I grew up in the national team, and I have a lot of friends for the other sport, for example, wrestling and uh, football or soccer or any type of sport. The boxers is so different. When you uh, watch the boxers or other sport, the other sport, they are maybe more active, but the boxers so calm. When mm. you we went to AOC, the uh, Olympic Committee for the for example, for the dinner, we went to a restaurant together. The other sport is the, they are hyper. They're going crazy and yeah, the boxers they're are calm. Crazy. The boxers, that's they're so different. Yeah. Why do you think boxers, that's, I, I, that, that, it's never occurred to me that, but now that I think about it, most boxers do seem kind of soft-spoken and, and other than the bigger than life characters when you're leading up to a fight and you need to hype it up or mm -hmm. something like that. What do you what do you put that up to that the boxers are so calm and soft spoken in in person? You know what? Because the boxing is not the sport; it's the fighting. It's so different, and we fight every day. We try to hit hard, and we try to, if we can, we try to injure somebody or we try to kill somebody in the ring. But with the rules, you really do. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> we want. But for the that, do situation, you really want to injure somebody? Actually, before that, no. But oh. after the one punch, mm. after start the one punch, nobody care. What do you mean after start the one? Punch? Once the once you're in the ring, once it's yeah, going. Yeah, if you uh, start the ring, if you are in st start the fight, the one po after the one second, right? Just you want to fight <laughs> because uh, this is the nature. If somebody hit me, but I when you hit say him it's back. not a sport, yeah, you don't mean. I mean, you're an athlete. Yeah, right? is the sport okay? Is the sport the boxing is the sport like the every the, we have a rules and we have it. What's before the fight? We are waiting and we have a referee, judges, but nobody said okay. We have a uh, play uh, boxing tonight. We said we have a fight. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's a fight. Because you you wanna okay I have a my weight is two hundred pounds and I wanna go in the ring with eight ounce box, uh, boxing gloves mm -hmm. it's so small so small and I wanna fight with uh, one guys like me around the one hundred kilo or ninety kilo we wanna fight we don't care about the uh, other things just we wanna be winner successful in the ring mm. and how you can get it punch harder and don't give up that's it and this is not tennis or volleyball is the boxing after the fight yeah we respect to other fighter too but after that if, if uh, somebody come talk shit we don't care but i'm assuming that so are there two solars is there the Salar who's sitting in front of me right now and the calm and soft-spoken and modest guy that i've met before and then the guy in the ring who's completely yeah, who's a killer. Yeah, but sometimes the solar number one, if you ask a uh, hard question, the change <laughs> to solar number two. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the solar number two, the yeah. one in the ring, does that guy, does he appear anywhere else? You know, in the grocery store, if he gets pissed off at the price or mm. something? I mean, is it like the Hulk? You know, the Incredible Hulk, he suddenly turns into a different... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, last week, uh, I live in the condo. I went to gym uh, to do some apps. This is my routine. And actually, I was alone. And I take off the, my T-shirt to see my the body. And one guy is coming, and I know we should put on the T-shirt. Mm. And he said me, hey, what are you doing? You should uh, put this on the This is a public gym. It wasn't yes, your gym. Okay, yeah. no, uh, and I said, listen, I was alone. Right. Yeah, but don't be rude. And he said, no, li uh, listen, you should do it faster. And actually, I did. And I tried to show the boxing. And he said, 
are you a boxer? I said, uh, sometimes. I said, do you want to spar with me? I said, okay, thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> I said, mm, I'm not interested. I said, yeah, because he told me why you are naked. I said, what's your problem? We are both men. And he said to me, right. you, you don't want to spar with me? I said, no. You weren't and naked. He you said, had your sh yeah, shirt off. Right? Yeah, just your yeah. shirt off. Yeah. And he said, Sorry, my English is not. No, very that's well. fine. I just want to clarify uh, for yes. people imagining you completely naked. Yeah, yeah no, sorry. <laughs> and he said, "Why? What's your problem? We are both men." I said, "Okay, if you want it, uh, I uh, accept w your." Was challenge. he a big guy? Did he look like a boxer? No, actually, he's around the seventy-five to eighty kilos. Okay, he, but very bold, was very confident. Than, apparently, yes. yeah, yeah. And <laughs> he went to. Uh, bring the uh, gloves, me too. And he said, okay, I am MMA guy. I want to use my leg. I said, okay, do any time. You're anything. okay with that? Yeah. All right. That was so uh, easy for me. And I called my manager. <laughs> he, my manager, he's a lawyer too. And I said, uh, hi, Gary. Uh, Is it okay if I kill this yeah, person? I, I Will I, I get in trouble? Uh, yeah. I asked him, hi, Gary. <laughs> If I broke the ribs or nose, what's the this role? This is horrible. Yeah, yeah he oh, said, yeah. don't do it, Salah. I said, yeah. he wanna. Yeah. And he uh, just I accept, accepted the I don't the think challenge. you, yeah, you don't have the consent and to, he to said, the, the, hurt him. If yeah. he wanna come, mm. and uh, it's okay. But take a widow and ask him, uh, okay, I'm a professional boxer. Are you agree? Yes. And did he do that? Uh, yes. Do, wow. And what a story. This is last week. Yeah, just the last week. Okay, I'm curious. And after this, uh, that, is this person still alive? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he was a uh, uh, surgeon in the army. Oh, okay. He, now we are friends. Okay. Uh, yeah, we are friends. That was quick. He yeah. was in the Middle East, and he was a really nice guy. What, so d did you spar? Actually, or? after that, he searched my name and said, okay, I am so bad luck because I want to fight with somebody. He's Canadian <laughs> champion. <laughs> right. Right. I don't believe him. I said, right. okay. Uh, and now, yeah, we are friends. But just I want to explain to you, the boxers, actually, I, I never fight out of the ring. Mm -hmm. I'm so calm and my friends uh, knows about that. But... In the ring, everything is changed because we work, we sleep, we eat just for the three minutes in the ring. Yeah. I know sport is the first thing for the uh, have a healthy life. But for some professional boxer, they don't care because we fight pro. Is the pro and amateur so different? Amateur style is the Olympic style. Yes. It's like the other sports, like uh, uh, judo, like the football, yeah. like yeah. the wrestling. Yeah. But the pro boxing, people and promoter and matchmaker pay for the real fight with the small gloves, without headgear, yeah. and maybe eight round, 10 round, or yeah. 12 round. Yeah. And yeah, just we fight for the three minutes but hang on so a second i i i worry that you do a disservice to your sport by saying it's not a sport by saying you're fine for because and this is why i can only imagine to get to your level uh you have to be super disciplined yes you have to you're you're probably working hours and hours a day at this, right? I mean, no one becomes, one thing I have, I have learned, having the opportunity to interview people over the years is, no one gets your level of success by chance, by luck. I mean, and that kind of discipline, that kind of work at, at your sport is, just, is not just a guy walking in, getting into a fight. I mean, this is like a, so, so that's a big part of what you do, right? As you say, for those three minutes, you're training probably constantly. Actually, for the three minutes, I sacrifice my everything. I never drink, I never drink, never smoke. And every night I go to bed at 10, 10.30, and I eat just healthy food, and I sacrifice everything. I'm here 
in the Canada yeah. because my dream. Well, that's a big deal. Yes. That I, says a lot about you. I was telling somebody today, we had somebody um, um, on the show two or three years ago, and a guy named Dr. Ali Parsa, and he's a billionaire, and he and he started this um, medical company, Babylon Health, he's doing other things now, but but I asked him, who do you hire? You know, who when you when, who does a billionaire hire? And he said, one of the executives that he hired knew nothing about medicine, knew nothing about business, and which is what he was doing. You know, business to do with med- medicine, but he hired him because the guy had been a professional football player, soccer player. You know, in England, and he said, to become a professional soccer player, I knew this guy had discipline, was ready to work hard, knew how to be coached knew how to listen, like all of these things. So the guy hires him and becomes a successful executive at his company without any other experience, but it says something about the character of the person. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel like sitting here with you, um, you know, jokes aside about fighting the guy in the the gym or whatever, uh, to become what you have become uh, has to, speaks to great discipline that you must have. Yeah. As you say, when your friends are going out to the club till four in the morning and you're saying, no, I got to take a pass on it, you've missed out on a lot, right? Yes. And was it worth it? Is uh, it worth it? If I look back, yeah, because I was uh, born in the very hard situation. I had the very poor family in the uh, west of the Iran, Kermansha. And the Kermanshaw, my father said, my father is a coach. Actually, he's my best friend. And always said, Solar, do you want to stay here like your uh, friends or your cousin? We don't have any chance here. We don't have any chance here because you you want to live like me when you want to grow up and uh, when you want to have kids. You want to stay here because we don't have anything. So he always knew that boxing or could be a way out. Exactly. My father said- I was said, gonna ask you about yeah, that. Yeah, my father said, okay, you have it just a one way because you are not smart. <laughs> you can't, no, it's just a kid. <laughs> <laughs> You're four, I mean, give the boy a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. actually he said, okay, is the, uh, fighting is the best opportunity for me to change my life and Actually, that was so hard. That was so hard because when I was in the national team, every time we have a problem with the head coach or or sometimes with the government because I was a little different. And I speak too much and said, okay, don't speak. But I was the captain of national. I was best boxer in the Iran. And uh, because that time I had the better freedom because mm-hmm. nobody said oh, uh, we don't they don't have a second fighter too close to uh, right, right. Uh, what's the mean god right. close to uh, my class and i was best boxer and when i was in the iran i sometimes i spoke too much but sh- long story sh- uh, short it, it was it worth it uh, that was the question was, yes, is it worth is it, it worth to it. give up all of the things that other teenagers or young men or whatever would have to sometimes i missed for that time but yes if i uh, didn't tr- uh, try to sacrifice everything no any chance you might still be in Kermanshaw and not, not yes doing so well. let, let me ask you specifically about that time i'm glad that you went there because i i wanted to ask you about it you're born in the mid 90s in Kermanshaw in iran you come from a, sort of an athletic family your dad's mm-hmm. a professional boxing coach first of all uh, wh- where is your dad now is he in canada as well or is he no in, he's in the iran he's in iran yes so he Really, I because I wondered because you're so outspoken about this regime and Iran and everything. I wondered if if your family would still be in Iran. That's a I, I, that surprises me. Um, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Tell me a bit about your dad because he obviously has had a tremendous impact on your life. How would you describe him? Actually, he's my best friend. He he's my best friend and he's the best coach and. I'm so close to him, and now uh, it's my feeling I miss him uh, because I grew up with him, and uh, I was so first shy, and after that I scored the boxing. 
You were scared of yeah, boxing. Yeah, scared of boxing. Really? Too much, yeah. And I was alone, just one, and I have a sister, but she's younger. And my mother said, my mother tried to protect me and said, okay, don't do it for solar. Mm. And boxing so dangerous. And my father, and we, when we, uh, uh, what's the name, went to gym and I saw the other boxer, I said, okay, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm good. But uh, did you resent your dad for making you, for getting you into boxing? After the, you know, my father, he's so special. And he first, he never leave me in the ring alone mm. before I have a more than 300 fight. First three uh, or 40 fights, after one second or maybe 10 seconds or maybe one round, he showed the tower and said, okay, that's it. I said, okay, if I want to fight. I said, no, I want to uh, protect you. Hmm. I need you for future. After the one, two, three years, I wasn't king in the ring because uh, I have a good experience and nobody touched me. And my father- Wait a second, one, three, three, four years. You you, you started when you were a little kid. Yes. So when, when what are we really talking about? My it? first fight, I was 16 years old. Uh -huh. My first real fight, that because we had a very good camp around the 10 years, 10 years. And my father, we, uh, he's a very really good coach and uh, work on my defense working. And mm -hmm. if you watch my other fights, I was in the top uh, 10 in the world. And two times I was five in the world. And for now I'm champion in the Canada and I, I have a plan to be a champion in the world. But I'm not a strong boxer. Yeah, I'm skinny. And the older, if you watch the older cruiserweight, they are strong, they are fighter. But I have a good footwork. Well, that's, I was going to ask you what the Solar thing is that yes. makes you so special. Because everyone, Iron Mike had the punch, the knockout blow, and, and Muhammad Ali has the dance and, and the fast feet and all exactly. that. What, what is your, what makes you as good uh, from exactly. your perspective? Yeah. Or why why are you so good? Yeah, when I was a kid, every day my father uh, played the Muhammad Ali and said you should learn about the footwork. Hmm. Don't look at the punches, just look at the footwork. And when I was 14, 15 years old, I was like a dancer hmm. with my footwork in the ring. And uh, actually, it, I was not good in the throw the punches. I was so stupid. But in the footwork, I was amazing. Actually, uh, for now, just my first thing is the footwork. And when we send the offer for the other boxers, they are strong. And they watched the video and said, okay, how can we uh, get the, these boxers? Because my last fight, eight round with the one uh, unpusted uh, boxer, he was the good Peter Novacek. And he's strong too. He tried to touch me eight round and he could it because I was so faster with my footwork and all the boxers know me, uh, know me and my best gun is my footwork. Nobody mm. can touch mm. me in the ring wow. for cruiserweight. Cause you're, you're, you're a tall guy, but you're fast. Yeah, I'm six huh? four. Yeah. And by the way, your height, you look like a basketball player and you loved basketball, right? You, yeah, I was basketball player too. So you, um, but I mean, at what point in your journey, do you kind of accept that you're going to be a boxer? And at what point do you actually know how good you are? Actually, I didn't believe myself, but my father do. We had the big champion in Iran. He was my cousin too, but we have a problem, family issue. Mm. And he was the captain of national team Iran. And he fought two Olympics, actually five Olympics, two, uh, three Asia Olympic and two Olympic, London and Beijing. And uh, my father said, you, you are better. I said, me, he's the giants. And he's the top in the uh, Asia and the top five in the world. He mm. said, no, you are better. He believed me. 
he believe me i fought with the one champion uh, uh olympian champion he said okay you are but always my father believe me sometimes i don't believe myself and now i'm 30 sometimes i said okay when i have a fight they send me offer i promise this is the 100 percent true i never watched my fighters just i send the link for my father said okay accept the challenge i never saw the fight wow because i believe him right. when he said you don't have any problem with him i said okay i hmm. wanted this fight sala did you ever um when you talk about him saying to you this is the this is going to be your ticket as they would say your ticket out of here you know mm. we we don't we have a modest existence. We're in Caramon Shah. I want you to be bigger than that. This is the way that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Was it ever an option? I'm going to ask you about becoming the captain of the, the national team. But in your mind, in the back of your mind, did you always know you were going to leave your own? Or was there some sort of option to make a career inside Iran that would help your family and all of that? Actually, uh, yeah, I believe that. After, because I told you, my father said, you be a champion of the world for pro boxing, because we don't have any pro boxing in the Iran. And he said, okay. It's not even really supported from what no, I understand. No, even, for even, amateur boxing. Even the national too. team, you didn't get that much support. No. You didn't have resources. You didn't have what other teams would have in other countries, right? Yes. Yes. This is a bad situation. We have a lot of good boxers in the Iran. A lot of good boxers. But... They don't have any chance because no media, no government, no money, and nobody care. Can I ask why that is? A lot of Iranians listening might know the answer. It might be easy for for me. I understand that you know rock music is the devil's music from the West or something. So under the Islamic Republic, they don't want that. What what is their problem with boxing? Why wouldn't they want? Why wouldn't the regime want a successful? boxing team after the uh, revolution they suspended three four uh, sport billiard chess, chess yeah and boxing yeah and i think it's the bullying but they but wrestling is okay right yeah wrestling is but two times before the olympic we had a very good uh athlete mm -hmm. and in the airport they said okay because the u.s one of the what's the minga play for the this uh olympic yeah. okay you should come back right they lose the olympic right and for boxing yeah they uh, closed the federation they said okay this is sport it american sport ah and it's too western yes <laughs> no no and yeah. Uh, do you want to hit you somebody is not a lot but we had a lot of sport boxing probably existed before the united states ever <laughs> right right so, so yeah. they don't have any knowledge mm. they, and you can speak with them because they don't listen and you want to speak somebody said okay we should talk to i was in the federation i know everything in the federation and it's not anything federation can do mm or government can do because you should go speak with Ayatollah or we said Marja uh, Taqlid Marja Taqlid I don't know what is that it's some like the leader mm. uh, for re uh, religion you should go get the accept for them some old blessing guy blessing from uh, yeah, yeah. yeah they are stupid <laughs> and they don't know about the boxing right. or swimming right. if you go in the speak in the boxing it thinks you you speak uh, about the gladiators yeah, yeah. and how we want to speak with them i mean it's the same government that you know judges the lyrics of a, a poet and decides whether they're good or not i mean it's, it's the, the whole thing is ridiculous well with that as the backdrop with that as the context what was it like to become the captain of the team Meli of the Iranian national team at, at the age of 23? I mean, was it something that was you had mixed feelings about because of the lack of support, or were you very proud? Or tell me. I actually, uh, when I uh, be a captain of national team, I was just 24 years old. Mm -hmm. We had that, for that team, we had the much older boxers. 32, 31, 34, or maybe 36. But 
I had the more experience for them. I had to run the 65 uh, national team fight. And uh, I was best in the Iran. And I used my uh, opportunity to speak about the, yeah, you can speak for everything when you are in the Iran. If you talk too much, if you be in the Iran, you be like the too much. Yeah. And, uh, but I speak sometimes about the, my box, uh, my team, and we speak about the boxers. We need the attention, but nobody care. But you said earlier that you you were a bit of a troublemaker. You would say things that um, they didn't like. That people, what what kind of things? What got you into trouble, or what was it that you were saying that was a problem? Yeah, two times, uh, two times. Uh, uh, I was when I was in the national team two wars I had a problem with the we said harassment I don't know they, they don't the have authorities the, the, the yeah. so like security yeah. I don't yeah. know security about yeah. the, your mind uh, and we have a problem because two times I speak too much about the, sometimes about the freedom or sometimes the you actually I was on TV where did you no, say not the TV for first time, uh, I remember we have we had the problem when they said me we should go for the Muharram mm-hmm. and all the athletes they should go there and said okay we wanna do, we don't wanna come we don't like it and first time after that they sent a letter for us for the federation. Uh, you should fire the Sarah Ghulami and I was uh, outside the national team around the six months. You weren't scared to defy the dictates of the, the government like that? Uh, if I said I don't scare, I'm lying. Mm. Yes, but if I don't speak and nobody speak, how we can change the regime? All right. Gion, we have a lot of athletes out of the Iran. Around the half of the refugee team is the Iranian. Yeah. And AOC refugee team, they send the mail for the each of them. They said don't speak about the politic. <laughs> yeah. And I know some uh, athletes, they are in the refugee team, and when I call them, for the other sport and called them okay do something That's okay scary. post something yeah. and said uh you know what i don't want to uh, get into politics politics yeah. and said okay you are a refugee team you are ready you are in the politic right you are in the refugee team do something and sometimes they promote the islamic republic i don't know why for example for me okay i'm champion of the canada that is the best opportunity to me to speak about my country. Mm. My last fight, somebody said, okay, uh, we have a champion of Islamic Republic, Iran. I said, okay, no, I am okay. Iranian. Islamic Republic is different. Right. If I silence, who want to speak? Mm. And I said, okay, we have a lot shaheed in that uh, for the freedom martyrs yeah, Mar- yeah martyrs for the freedom yeah and when I, somebody said okay for example last week in the you guys about the guy, the the guy Ewans, who saw you naked yeah my Ewan mm-hmm, okay. no <laughs> <laughs> back to the naked guy story yeah, go ahead yeah. uh, and in the Iran the put off the, my f- uh, photo and banner in the gym. Oh, they took it off. Yes, they took off, uh, take it off. And actually, I don't care when, or some problem. But when I think for the other sacrifice, the yeah. other the people or the yeah. young man, yeah. I said, okay, I'm shy to just to speak about this small uh, problem. Yeah. I said, I'm shy. Yeah. When you made the decision definitively, I, I, tell me how it worked when you made the decision to leave to come to Canada. Uh, and for a while, there's this bizarre thing that I've seen you mention on other interviews, but you never really get into the details of how you're in Canada, but you're still the captain of uh, Team Meli, which yeah. must have been very bizarre, yeah. you know. Um, 
Uh, tell me about the decision, first of all, the, 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 the moment where you knew that you were coming to Canada. Yeah, the last time I went to Iran, I was, uh, nas- I was in the national team, and also I signed a contract with Canada. And I went to Iran, and they come to us and speak to me and said, okay, don't do it. Why you speak with other TV? For example, Iran International. Mm. Don't do it. Don't do it. And who, to- who said that? <laughs> Actually, we don't know. <laughs> uh. Actually, they, they come from the government. Yeah. Somebody but calls and yeah, says that? I mean, no, yeah. in that, uh, when I was in that uh, federation, I uh. went to surgery for my jaw. And before one night before the surgery, they come us and speak, okay, don't do it anymore. You are in the national team. They came to the, to, to the hospital or to no, your house? before the hospital okay. because I went to a health federation for some letter for the... Operation. Yeah, yeah. operation. I, I went there and they came. We have a lot of this. I don't want to speak too much, but yeah, they are so rude. And my problem mm. is, yeah, is the you should speak to explain very stupid things for a stupid guy. <laughs> That's right, so right. ridiculous. Right, right. When this is what go, you're spending your life. Yes. Doing, yeah. Okay. If you want to speak with the what with the, some guy with the good knowledge, okay, you can speak with him and learn. Mm. And you are so stupid, and and you should move your neck and said, okay, yes, sorry. That's so ridiculous. Did you? Does it get to a point where? I don't even know. I mean, because you were the captain for two years. Did they cut you off or did you say I No, quit, actually or? I left my last opportunity for fight for the for my country. And uh, I forget. But uh, for the Paris, I think, for qualification mm-hmm. for the Tokyo Olympic. And I talked with my father and said, okay, don't do it anymore. And f- focus on your uh, new way in the pro boxing. And just just in the pro boxing and and after that i lived there my dad what's my career in the amateur and mm. said okay maybe it's enough for me and i just i want to focus on my new job can i just ask you in in terms of the other boxers your friends your compatriots in the on the national team when they find out that you're leaving to canada um were they supportive were they like hey damn it gam go man go you know or or were they were they trying to convince you to stay? No, the, all the sport, we are like the brother. We grew up together and they have a same issue, same problem with the government. Yeah. We have a really good talent. In so the how do they feel about you leaving? Do we, They're happy for you. Yeah, they are happy. If they be a successful, I'd be happy too. Mm. Even you're though like you're no brothers. longer helping them on the team, no. they, they feel good no. for you. Yeah, to before that, when I fought, for example, today, the national team in the uh, now in, uh, in the Thailand for the qualification Olympic. Now the, they fought, two, I think tomorrow they have a two fights. The Iranian national Iranian team? Iranian national okay. team for the last uh, window for the get the uh, qualification for the Olympic. Mm. And always I send a message for them. Okay, you should be t- t- successful. And sometimes I watch the fight for the uh, opponent and mm. said, okay, you should do this, do that. And they are the same. We are like the brothers. What was it like coming to Canada for you in the beginning? Did it feel good? Or were you, I mean, you go from being something of a star in Iran, yes. right? You're the. You're a famous boxer there. You're at the top of the country to coming. Nobody would really know you here yet, right? Yeah. Last time I uh, came to Canada, I came just with the one backpack, a small backpack, because I talked. I went back after two weeks. Hmm. And some situation in the Iran and some, because I spoke with the Iranian, t- Iran International TV and they come for the live show in the Iran International TV and national team that was in the Russian for the, the champion of the world and my father said okay maybe you should don't come back anymore mm. because you left your national team and you went to Canada for pro boxing and you 
do something more and I was uh, here f with the work permit and after that I tried to get uh, my permanent resident and stay here just when I came to Canada I uh, talks is the my one step to uh, go in the US yeah. and because the COVID no fight anymore for two years and after that I had the really bad surgery for I have an injury for my uh, I turn my bicep torn and after that three years I lost my best uh, time for three years and now I back and I have a uh, future yeah given that your dad played such an important role in you getting into this given that you talk about him as your best friend given that he's everything to you how hard has that been to not to be here while he's there yes actually he is my coach and I'm so comfortable when he's uh, in the corner sometimes in the boxing is so hard and sometimes my heart rate is around the 200 and when I grabbed the boxers and watched the corner and I saw him and said okay uh, I'm not mm. alone he would calm you yes and before before the, the, the fight always speak to me and said okay everything because he knows my personality mm. sometimes he speak to me and sometimes for, for example the last fight I had the problem and in the ring when I was tired I hold the boxer and looking for him oh. and said okay he's not here but before the fight always before the walking I call him and he speak to me okay calm down use your footwork use your jab when you are tired just hold him and you are better Salar I believe you is that just one step enjoy your moment and always he said okay this is your moment enjoy sometimes before the fight is so normal oh, sorry the, it's uh, i can't the image is just it's like a movie when you just talked about a more recent fight where he's not there and you you look up ex hoping expecting yeah. him to see that that's quite heartbreaking i don't want to cry because uh, <laughs> uh uh everyone accept the fighter be strong and fighter but we had the really long situation sometimes we talk together and we spoke about the troubles we spoke about the uh, problem and he's so positive man and said always he laughing and said you remember Salar they don't uh, uh, want us and now everyone believe you and we're just laughing and yeah we have it with a problem I every time I miss you because I grew up with my father and every time uh, every day and he watch me he protect me and he teach me I never have sometimes yeah I was so angry because the situation because the fight sometimes I lose the fight I remember one time I came back in the national team I was with him and I threw uh, the trash the, all the my medals hmm. and said I don't want it anymore I don't they don't I uh, always we have a problem with the national team because I was best boxer but they don't want me right. for the some politic right. and one times I throw the trash all the my medals I said I don't want it anymore please please leave me alone and he was silent he don't speak and he go there I watch him he go in the trash and clean the medals and he went after two three days they say hey Salar I know we have a problem but we don't have any choice you should do it you should do it I believe you you can do it next time we go stronger and because I said okay I won that was so clear Hmm. He said, okay, maybe you should do it better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Do you think of him? when? What, do you, what are you thinking of when you're boxing? In the ring. Is there anything in your mind other than... Every time I 
things uh, sometimes for example sometimes I fight with uh, one black guy he's strong and or not to just a fight for sparring too mm-hmm. and I saw the body is uh, free I hear my father say okay let's go for body okay solar she camish solar she camish said okay I throw the punch or sometimes said when I was uh, tired my father said okay imagine you are in the sea and if you don't swim you sink yeah and you don't have any choice yeah I know you are tired but you should keep going wow. and just swimming just he said in that uh, Farsi and Kurdish and uh, sometimes I'd be tired just I talk myself I said okay keep swimming keep swimming keep mm. swimming and yeah in the ring is so hard so hard sometimes my heart rate is more than my my heart rate because the all the uh, athletes is the same if I see it my heart rate around the 35 36 37 but in the ring we go in there maybe uh, over the 200 that's so hard and you can what's the meaning uh, think if you heart rate go more than 160 170 is so hard but just uh, I heard he said keep swimming keep swimming mm. and everything is good yeah he's my friend and I miss you, you know the obvious uh, w- what we would think somebody who doesn't know better like me I would think that the standard the competition um, for boxing here in say North America would be higher than in, in Iran uh, in other words you'd be more challenged here is that true uh, is the different like the pro and amateur we, mm. we can say it, pro is harder to amateur is the different for example running 1k or 100 meter right both of them is hard but is the different for 1k or 10k you should have a more endurance for 100 meter, just you should have a power which one's explosive. the pro and amateur in that analogy the amateur is everything it depends the speed ah speed and movement and pro is endurance pro is 15 endurance, rounds 10 rounds whatever yes and also you should have a good heart not not good heart just for the uh, pumping no good heart for the because sometimes you punch the uh, the bit small gloves you hit the body you have a pain right. feeling pain and right. you should okay in the boxing or other sport is so different for other sport you can pretend oh the, he hit me and something like that you yeah. should just tell the judges or referee the ref, yeah. yeah yeah he hit me fall for, on the ground in football yeah exactly yeah, yeah, for yeah. other sport yeah but for boxing if he hit you but you should show the referee i'm good <laughs> no i'm good right. but you can see right. sometimes the uh, the eyes is closed right yeah eyes is closed and the judges said okay can you see and uh, the coaches said four times said okay it's the four you can you can see just he touched the your leg okay four or three but you protect or oh, show the do- rear ref I'm good yeah it's so different have you been knocked out yes you have been yes oh. uh, in the sparring oh, in sparring yeah, in but sparring. never in an actual no, fight no in the not in the fight I didn't think so not yeah. yet and uh, when you sleep in the canvas mm-hmm. or somebody hits your ribs or body after one month or two months or one week you be healed you be mm-hmm. good mm-hmm. But your feeling, you need more time. Mm. Your your fighter. If you f- if I f- uh, sleep in the canvas, I don't care about the my body. But my personality said, oh no, I need a maybe one year, two year, wow. or maybe more. If I can oh. ask you, don't I mean? Forgive me if this I I, uh, I if this I don't know if it's a delicate question or not, but your th- 30 now is that yes. what you are yeah so i know that there's boxers who've been very successful north of 30 older than 30 in their 40s etc even but um 
in a lot of sports, I mean, you would be, you know, a hockey player is 30 years old as a veteran, you know, like they're mm -hmm. like, uh, this guy's got two or three years left, mm -hmm. you know. Um, where where are you, where is that with boxing? I mean, in terms of be, your aspirations to become a world champion, et cetera, mm -hmm. does part of you, there's so many people, Solar, so many people who come on this show, dancers, athletes, musicians, uh, who are correctly, rightly resentful or, you know, sad at the fact that because they grew up in Iran, they, it's like you lose a few years, you know, to what people have, the opportunities that people have here because you don't have the same resources, you don't have the same ability. You might be in a sport that you're not even allowed to, to, to work in in, in Iran. Um, is that true for you or do you feel um, you're right exactly where you should be at 30 years old? That's so sad, but uh, yeah, for the boxing, the age is so important. It depends the weights first. The small guys, the champion of the small guys maybe is 20, 21, 22, mm. because they can hold the weights. They grow up and they go uh, higher, and after that, the, the champion is the change. But for the heavyweights, it's different. Heavyweights maybe for more than three, you can make him better money or better successful. Right, right. But for now and past, everything is changed. The 30 years old, if you look to just to watch the photo of the 30 years old, 50 years before, yeah. they were looking guys. Right at 15 <laughs> or 16. Right. And now everything is changed. And yeah, in the future, if somebody watched that, our video in the future, they said, okay, he's the look like the 16. Right. Yeah, because the uh, everything is changed. Do you feel young or do you feel old? I feel old. No, no I'm you're joking. <laughs> um, actually, my record is much better when I was in the national team. For example, I did 10K running just on the uh, 39 minutes. Mm. For when I was in the uh, national team, I can't believe I can do it with 95 kilo for 390 uh, minutes 10K. For other, my record is much better now. You're in better shape now. Yeah, I'm in so better shape. And uh, Do you worry about it? Do you think, do you... I mean, I, this is ridiculous. I, you're very young. I'm not suggesting you're, you know, I mean, but I, as an athlete, do you worry that, are you more careful now, say, of what you're eating? The, in terms of your daily regimen, mm. do you think, okay, I got about this many years left to become the world champion, mm. and now maybe f eight years ago I would have that bag of potato chips, but I won't have it now, you know? Actually, I eat the potato chips, but... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of we need you chips. to be a champion <laughs> god damn it what are you doing uh, and, uh, <laughs> I forget your question my, my, my question I is, I mean, my, my question my is are you potato more, yeah. chips <laughs> do you have it <laughs> we've learned a lot we've learned a lot about your weakness <laughs> your weakness is just talking about potato <laughs> chips <and> you, <laughs> you do eat potato chips yes how often I do uh Actually, I eat the potato, but okay. sometimes the potato chips. No, the potato is different. A boiled potato. I, we're talking about potato chips. I want to know if you do you eat junk food? Uh, sometimes, yeah. You do? Yeah, sometimes. Not too much, but uh -huh. sometimes. And do we, can we? Not the junk food, but sometimes I love the burger. Oh, uh, burgers? Yeah, I mean, something like yeah. that. Not the junk but, food. Uh, but I mean, in terms of, uh, oh, how about this? As an Iranian, are are we allowed to eat the rice and and the mm -hmm. nuno paneer as a as a boxer? No, I eat it uh, very healthy. Ah. I eat it more of um, my uh, diet is first is the protein, and then carbs, and because sometimes I eat the more than eight uh, thousand calorie, because yeah, I burn it. Right. I uh, have a three times workout of the day, first ten k running for example. But is that sometimes it's chin or sometimes twenty k, twenty k running with ninety five wow. kilo. Wow. 
wow. and 11 o- for morning and 11 o'clock some weights and abs and after that 20 round boxing right. and bag and sparring I, I allow you to eat potato chips yes. after you do all that yes. do you have <laughs> <laughs> you can eat ketchup flavor potato yeah, exactly. chips after you do those all of that yeah, yeah I get it um, <laughs> okay um, before I, I'm going to ask you about June 16th and about the, the future yeah. but let me ask you about politics because you're not just outspoken about the regime um, in Iran, but uh, um, for which I'm sure many people are grateful. Um, but you're also very clear politically about who you support. You've been publicly um, very outspoken about supporting Reza Pahlavi, about being a Pahlavi supporter. Um, tell me about making that decision, not necessarily to support Reza Pahlavi, but to be as public about it as you have been. Actually, I read the lot of books i love the history every night every night i uh, read or search about the, uh, our history iranian story after the mat matha or kurdish the kurdish and per- persian is separate or hakhamanishian or nader shah or my favorite uh, part of this Reza Shah, Reza Shah and all of them. Sometimes I read or uh, I saw the documentary about the history and every every the time I cry mm-hmm. because we have a Faraz and Nasheeb is up and down in the our story. And if you want to change everything, if you want to do something for your country you should read the book Mm -hmm. read the history or listen to the rook history series yes exactly exactly a few episodes on reza shah yeah you know i'll I'll send you the links yeah Yeah, okay actually i saw it okay and yeah that's it you don't need it just to read the books and now is the different podcast yeah podcast youtube but uh, to good uh, like the rook media or i forget the name okay doesn't matter uh yeah we should change everything. But if we don't have any leader, we can do it. If you saw the, all the history of revolution in the world, without two, three, uh, is the different story. All of them has a, uh, the leader. Mm. And the leader not necessary to fight with the government. For example, Gandhi. How the Britannia Mm-hmm. That was the best moment for the Britannia. The Gandhi, without fighting, do something for Britain. And the Britain said, okay, I'm sorry. And we want to go. Just because everyone in the big India, Pakistan and India, that uh, time is the same. They believe to Gandhi. Mm-hmm. If he, Until they got, they got divided yeah, and became two countries. Yeah, but exactly. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that was because the, the, the British. And they said, okay, don't fight. Nobody fight. Hmm. Doesn't matter. I love the Pahlavi. Hmm. I love the Pahlavi. And doesn't matter uh, Shahzadeh or anyone else. But we don't have any uh, body like the Shahzadeh. Because the, everyone like the Shahzadeh. Not the everyone, but the Bishter uh, Merdom loved the Shahzadeh. And it's best uh, opportunity for us to be a, uh, just don't be a separate. Mm-hmm. Be a one way, okay, we can use. Actually, we want to use him. He don't want to use us. If you t- watch the background, father and grandfather, he changed everything. We was so poor uh, in the Qajar. So poor, but the Reza Shah, they changed everything. Did you grow up? I mean, you were born in the Islamic Republic. You yes. Know. Did you grow up loving the Pahlavis? Or is this something that... Everyone they- liked the Pahlavi. But when I was so kid, mm-hmm. my father... No, my father, sorry. Uh, some friends said... Is your father a pro-Pahlavi uh, or no? 
actually uh, I like maybe maybe not no oh yeah i can explain <laughs> to okay. my father always said actually my father always said because he want to protect us mm-hmm. he said don't do anything for politics well he's not the only one who would say that yes. i mean i'm just listening to you right now yes. thinking not everybody loves shasa there so you know if you want to be solar and gain the popularity of everybody the easier thing might be to not n- not explain your preferences and you know just stay quiet on that. I'm sure somebody's told that to you. You know, I said, why do you if you you know you might alienate some people by being this this far in for Reza Pahlavi. I mean, I always appreciate when someone has the strength of their convictions and says, this is what I support, and I'm not going to be shy about it. But there can be a downside, right? Okay, you know what? Uh, I love the Shah Zadeh. And I support him. And I want to die for my country. If mm. the Shah Zad said, okay, you should do something because I believe him. He's my leader. He's until he loves the country, like the grandfather and father. Is If he said, you should die for country, it's my pleasure. I'm a fighter. I want to die for my country. Who uh, who can say no? Mm. If this Shah Zadeh said, okay, today you should back to Iran and fight in the street, I said, okay, it's my pleasure, Shah Zadeh, to give me an opportunity for do something for my country. I love Shah Zadeh because I love Iran. And best man for the opposition. Do you know anybody like the Shah Zadeh? Well, I know that there's uh, there's people who would say, I prefer this person to be our prospective leader, or I prefer uh, that we have a, a, a vote that it doesn't involve the monarchy. I mean, there are people who are going to say that. You know that. And and uh, why are you looking at me like I want to change my personality <laughs> to Solar too. Well, you want to what do you want? Just to change my personality to solar to ready for fight. <laughs> no, I'm fight? just kidding. No, you, I'm just no you're kidding. not going to fight me. No, but I'm I, just I mean, kidding. you know that there's yeah. there's people who are friends no, I don't of Ahmed Ismail for yeah, example. Yeah, I don't have I mean, any problem with you. Just, uh, just actually, we had the problem with the Masi Ali Najat. Uh-huh. Two, three times within the TV and uh, two, three times with the what's in the WhatsApp and said, I don't care who you are. I just want to do something for my country. Mm. And I think somebody like him, Hamid Ismail Yun, and uh, Masi Ali Najad, or something, they are small guy to speak to the, about the uh, change regime. Because can you trust somebody? She was in the uh, Intikhabat for the Khatem, uh, uh, I forget the name. One stupid uh, guy mm-hmm. for the intikhabat. And after that, he, she came here and changed everything. Okay, that's okay. We accept you. We accept everyone to change the what's in right. mind. But if you want to uh, stay on the uh, Shahzadeh mm-hmm. or anybody to love the country, we don't accept that. You can be here or do something for your country. Or if you you but when your mind. when your dad said, I mean, I, I hear you. I, 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 I mean, I hear your passion certainly. If, if your if your dad says, I mean, it's not your dad's not alone. First of all, the, I mean, we had a very prominent um, musical star here recently, and you know, he he said, uh, I don't want to. Uh, you know, it's not. I'm a musician. It's not my place to to say who. This is the politic word. I'm not. I'm not the politic. Exactly, it's the politic. Because the politic man, uh, they don't wait for us. They don't care about the, my mindset. If you said, I don't have any way, okay, I'm It's deferred. not my place. It's uh, not my know. place. Okay, you are already on the one place. <laughs> what do you, why? why? What, what, you're, what's the place? P- politic is You so think Im- we all need to pick a side? Yes, politic is so important. Okay, how you can say, I don't care about the, my future, well, you could, say, you, you could say, I care I, about getting rid of this regime. I, I want to do whatever we can, but I'm not I'm not going to throw my uh, support between, behind any part. Whatever the people of Iran want, I'll support that. How about that? Can, what if somebody says that? Okay, if we can do something, how we can change it? 
I have a very uh, the, I have a lot of artist guy and always I have a problem with them and said okay do something they said uh, you know what Salar we are don't uh, it's a good guy for the politics I said okay if you don't want to do this you don't want to back to your country mm. you don't want to have a concert in and the you feel like we need a leader and you feel like Shahzadeh is the most obvious leader for you for n- yes but I speak different uh, the, the Shahzadeh is the, the uh, the, my leader but we need a leader if you know any other leader good mm. leader why not we can accept them but the Shahzadeh is different and Shahzadeh said I don't care about the what's the meaning God kingdom yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to be a king I, I, be king. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be a king <clears throat> actually we need him he don't need us I heard that somebody had said to you uh, because you have a you have a boxing club, you have a you yeah. know, and somebody had said, "Be careful if you speak out politically like this. You might not have as many clients or customers." Um, what's your response to them? I don't care about the customers. I I am the fighter. I want to die for my country. Mm. I don't care about the customer for uh, two hundred bucks. <laughs> I can make money more than uh, the, any fighter in the Iran or any middle uh, in the North America. They said, oh, do, don't do it. They said, okay, I'm champion of the Canada, not the Iran. The whole country, I'm the best. I, I don't care about your 20 uh, the, the box the, uh, membership. I want to die for my country. I think this is Solar 3. I think there's Solar 1, the quiet, Solar, the, Solar 2, the Doesn't killer matter. in the ring. Solar, Solar one, 3 two, is the three, passion. Five, the six, passionate seven. Solar. <laughs> All of them is a die for country. All of them is a dunk, uh, die for. I have a problem with the communism, with anybody wants to hit my country. I'm Kurdish. I have a problem if they said the Kurdistan be, be separate. I want to die for my country. I want to die for Iran. I'm Kurdish, but I'm Iranian. Mm. The Shahs of the one don't want to be a king. Doesn't matter because just we need the first change regime right. and then think about it, okay, it we want to figure out about the we want a republic or uh, monarchy or, 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 or a parliamentary democracy else, or yeah, whatever anything yeah, else yeah. doesn't matter yeah first first thing is that we need the freedom and sec- uh, secular uh, the country that's it okay talk to me about before i let you go because you said something very provocative at the beginning of the interview that i have to bring back which is i mean you're a canadian champion but you you say in September it, you be, you think that's going to be your last fight for Canada because you want to potentially move. Tell me about that. Actually, yeah, the September I wanna uh, I don't sign a contract yet with any promoter. I wanna do it myself. Uh, do one big show in the September. Uh, I wanna use the, some artist and. I want to make one special for the last dance in the Toronto, uh, a special fight in the uh, maybe middle of September in the Toronto with the one guy. I'm waiting for the, they, they should fight each other. I want to fight uh, with the, the one of them, the winner of the, that fight. And I want a last fight fight for the Toronto. And it's going to be a big event. And... Uh, hopefully I can and then you're going to relocate you're going to move from Toronto uh, actually I have a good offer f- uh, f- from New York and United States that was my dream but for now everything has changed because I have a lot of friends here I have a dog and I have a gym and I have a lot of friends uh, like you but that was my f- uh, future. Maybe I should go there. But I send the offer for them. I want to stay here. Just I want to come for the fight for the United yeah. States. And uh, for sure, that be my last fight in the Toronto, uh, September. Who's the Who's the greatest um, boxer of all time? Uh, Muhammad Ali. And my favorite boxer is the, the Klitschko brothers. Oh, the Ukrainian guys. Yeah, Ukrainian. Guys. And who who is your role model? 
if you had the career, if you look at and say, in the next few years, I want to be, I want to do what that guy did. Who would that be? Uh, actually, I'm uh, already I'm model. An art the boxer want to be like me? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> no, uh, my f- I don't know. Actually, I don't. Fa- if I say something, maybe you can believe me. Uh-huh. I never saw the fight. I don't like a you don't w- watch watch, fights. watch the fight. I don't like to watch the fight. I don't believe you. Uh, t- You've never watched the Rumble in the Jungle. Uh, if I said never, I lie. Maybe just. Ten, five times. Wow! In my world. Yeah, you don't like watching boxing. Yeah, no, never. <laughs> when I was you're really the, doing a good job of selling the sport. Yeah, when, when, when uh, I was in the yeah. national team, Luachenko is the great fighter, or the Anthony Joshua, mm-hmm. or something like that. They had the fight in the amateur. The, all the hotels, all the country, they go in the stadium to watch them, and I watched the cartoon and said, <laughs> "I don't want to come." And uh, yeah, I liked it movie and uh, sometimes they said okay they have a fight they say listen i have a ticket i want to go to movie at uh, the cinema i want to watch the movie and uh, i love the story you were, you were telling about how you don't even watch the fighters that you're going to fight uh, beforehand to decide whether you're going to take it you, you dad Never. you just say ask your dad Never. Never. I'm that, isn't that the whole thing that you have to prepare for who you're uh, what, when your coaches is here, he's, he's going to go crazy if you don't know. I mean, uh, <laughs> he's sitting behind the glass there, yeah. wondering. Uh, we got to know who our opponents are. Uh, actually, you know what? Is the exactly like the war? The soldier they don't care about the uh, who want to who fight. they're fighting. Yeah, the, the what's the meaning of the leader said okay you should go right then left and then yeah. shoot the ball or you listen to something. the coach exactly i got i it. saw them uh, link my father uh, i sent them the link my father for example for the last fight is 100 percent true i sent the, the link and said okay so long. accept because the, my manager waiting he said do you want to fight okay i said give me a time i sent them a uh, video for my father I was, dri- I was driving after the two hours said please accept the fight and I took <laughs> the fight and I never saw the video I never saw the video but my father said okay use their jab move sleep on the left side because he's the southpaw you should jab and sleep on the left side and move and start with the right and just I did and every you should uh, you should come for my next fight I and either. yeah but uh, everything i was so weird because everything after the six seven run when i sit in the corner and said everything in the plan i was so weird not 99 percent 100 percent in the plan he did everything my father said, okay, I love, the- I love the relationship with you. Yeah, and he said everything. You, 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 you and your dad, there needs to, that's the movie. The movie is about you and your dad. It's just such an amazing story yeah, uh, and, and, and quite beautiful that you're, you entrust him. He still from afar is telling you, is basically coaching you. It doesn't and, matter because I told him, uh, always I grow the my fighter, I'm looking for him. But doesn't matter because he always speak to me speak to me uh, sometimes i saw the southpaw the throw the jab but he, they fall i hear my father said okay step back and then right step back and then right and that's it and i did but i heard with my wo- uh, father voice my father i remember when i'm now i'm here wait he said throw the one two for the Gian and then one left hook for Gian <laughs> you want to fight together verbally <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding uh, tell me about this um, June 16th uh, it's coming up uh, an Olympic style boxing event yes. it's called it's going to be broadcast on GEM TV so, yeah. so what is ha- for people who are listening who are in the greater Toronto area or if they want to come to Toronto from other places, what is happening on June 16th? 
June 16 is the f uh, my first uh, event and uh, because I told you we have a big event in the September is my first step at something like the practice and also we have a good portion here and Iran too I want to be a uh, promoter to use the Iranian talent for the future because I'm 30 maybe I have a two three fights four fights and done and after that I want to be a promoter and for be a promoter is that my first step but I did very strong and because we bring the TV and we have a special guest uh, uh, like you and uh, some artists they want to come uh, we want to because the Iranian need the one good promoter in the boxing mm. I told you we have a good very good talent we have uh, some boxers they are in the out of the country they are nothing zero zero fight zero fight but they pretend they are good boxers we are boxer but they are they have a zero fight but we have a very good talent maybe 200 fight or national team 20 or 30 or 50 national team but they don't have any chance we can help them to came here at the big show if the Iranian committee and Canada committee support us we can use the good talent mm. and after that we can fight for the world champion belt we don't have any world champion. Why? Because the Iranian are the, the for boxing. You need the big heart and shape body. All the Iranian have the big heart. You are big heart and they are smart and good physician. Mm. All of them is the strong and big. How the uh, Cuban, Ukrainian, American. Jamaican or all, every country can be a, have a one war, uh, maybe ten world champion, but in the history of Iran, zero. That's so ridiculous. We can do it, and uh, maybe uh, it's you. Hopefully, hopefully. But uh, if I be a champion, just the one is not enough. We should have a more. Mm. We should. We should. Okay, we have uh, some athletes out of the Iran. They, all the athletes in the Iran, they said, reach uh, him or they said, okay, do you have any opportunity or connection? We can use it. Oh, no, we don't have it. We, we, know, we don't know anybody. How? You should you, uh, pr uh, support your Iranian athlete. And if I don't care about the, my uh, all the... Uh, the uh, uh, different uh, athlete in the Iran how can I say I am a nationalist mm -hmm. I am I want to die for my Iran. or the ones on the refugee team as you talked about yes I had the opportunity to go in the refugee team I had the opportunity for fight for Olympic for the Canada but they said I don't want it I don't want I don't care mm. The last fight, they said we want to use the uh, Islamic Republic flag. I said, if you do it, I don't want to come in the ring. We have a different uh, uh, flag. It's Shiro Khorshid. It's our flag. It's our flag. I went in the ring and said, it's our flag. I went to commission and said, did you see? This is the our flag. And if I said okay maybe it's a bad form uh, my the, what's the a position <laughs> right. and other one is the position right. who cannot do it who hey man i i was looking forward to this already but i it's it's by far exceeded my expectations i really enjoyed speaking Thank you to so you much. salar one salar two salar three all of the salars uh it's 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 truly been no but really i i very much appreciate your time the the passion you brought to this your candor your your honesty um and uh um and how hard you've worked for for the iranian community um thank you for being here thank you for doing this can't wait to see you box um and 
get more belts? I mean, what do we look? What do we? How do we say this? Uh, achieve more? You, you need three or four of these around you, right? That's what the the world yeah, champions have. My next step is the North American belt, and after that, yeah, maybe one day for the world champion. Yeah, you should help me for the because we have a very hard mission. Mm. It's a very hard mission, but. Uh, I will try my best. How can I help? A sparring partner? Or? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm looking for a sparring partner. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. I'll be there for about uh, 40 seconds and then never again. But uh, I'm there. Thank you, brother. No, thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Actually, you helped me because uh, you support us. You get me uh, this opportunity to speak for the our talent in the Iran, our other sportsmen, our other athletes, and our country. Thank you for getting Thanks, this brother. opportunity. Thanks, brother. To be continued. We'll do it again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And that is full time for Rook for today. Our website, rookmedia.com. Thanks to the amazing team who put this show together each week. Smart Pega. Talented Anahita, Savvy Roham, Super Parisa, Bearded Omid, Methodical Kaveh. Thank you to all of you out there for supporting us and sharing our content. Please do subscribe if you haven't done so already on any or all of our platforms. Remember to find all things Rook related at rookmedia.com, including being able to support us there and become a Patreon member. Find me on Instagram at Gian Gomeshi. Find Rook at Instagram at uh, Rook Media. And as ever, Remember, Mizun Bashir.